This is a, a typical enlarger that I use. Uh, it's a condenser enlarger. Uh, it is wall mounted, as you can see. It's braced at the top, and then it's aligned with the laser aligner that we use to align it to the baseboard. Um, basically, it's a light bulb, and light bulb through a timer, and then inside there's a condenser that comes in and out. So you can see that the second condenser, for de depending on what format you're using, you'll put it at a different location. Then there's a handle here that lifts the negative carrier out. So this is a set of condensers here. A first condenser, then another set of condensers. And then there's a glass carrier, which the negative goes into, which holds the film flat. And then there's the negative stage here. This is uh, a four by five, uh, a, 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 a four by five uh, lens or a 135 millimeter, which is the shortest focal length I would use for four or five. I use this lens mostly for flashing paper. So it was set up way up to do flashing. Okay, and then the enlarger goes up and down with a handle. It's focused and then fine focused. An easel down there, your paper's there, and then with the timer, you can give a time exposure, and you can see that the light's coming on and off, and the timer tells me that my time is done. So just use regular, well, this is not a regular um, light bulb. This is a photographic light bulb. There's no numbering at the end, and that's the difference. So this is 150 watt, all the numberings on the side. I like to use 150 watt for very thin negatives where I, I can take advantage of my sweet spot in the lens. Or I use a 250 watt, which is not rated for this enlarger, but it allows me to get more power to, to, to print fiber-based paper. Uh, this would be a typical easel. It's a Saunders easel. This is a, an 11 by 14 easel. This is actually probably the best one I own, the best that made is Saunders, and it's just a lovely movement. You can see that that just moves up and down smoothly. You put your paper in the slots here. You can see that the, the paper sits in this little slot, and your blade comes down and pulls it down flat. You expose your paper with a negative end, and you do your dodging and burning. This is the two tools that I use. It's a burning tool where it's a circle with the white on, on one side and the black on the, the other side. It's meant to be put in between the light source, uh, the lens and the easel, and I should be able to see here the image and let light come through into areas I want to darken. And this dodging tool is meant to be put underneath the uh, underneath while the main exposure is going on to lighten areas. So these are the two tools I use, plus my hands. I've always talked about the duck's ass and the duck's bill. The duck's ass is when I curve my hand like that, and, and it creates a wider uh, blend, so I can use it underneath here to create a, a wide curve, or the duck's bill, which is that one. And that I use around people's heads. So when I want a vignette around my head a bit, I'll use the duck spill. And that will allow light to spill naturally around the triangular shape of my head to the scene that's around me. Okay. We also have gray lab timers here. This is used when I'm doing toning or uh, any effects where I have to count down away from the enlarger. I do not use this with the enlarger. I use these simple Gray Lab 450s. Uh, I like them a lot. Simple hit, and that's it. I do a lot of split grade printing, and I have all my series of different filters here. 
and these filters go up inside the mixing chamber above the negative, well above the negative, but below the bulb so the bulb doesn't burn them. And they just lay in here like that. And there's a grade four going in. And then I would maybe take that out and I have a grade one going in. You know, and I do a second exposure. So that's part of split printing, which I, I, I talked about later on. Now we move over to a slightly different table. This is my drop table. And basically, it's the same idea, exact same setup as here, except this one's mounted to the table, and I can move my easel up and down to get lower down to the, uh, uh, make a larger print. So this allows me, with a 4x5 negative, to make 2024s quite easily. I have more burning tools, but I only have three. These are the ones that I've been using for 25 years almost. And um, you'll notice the smaller one, I can put it right over top and you can see I can see through and I can use that for very small areas, very, very tight areas. I also have two really big enlargers. Um, both, uh, I, I, they were donated by BGM Color Labs to me. I worked there in the 80s and uh, when BGM um, stopped using enlargers, they asked me if I wanted them and I wanted them. So I, I use it. This DeVere, this is a DeVere 515. It's really unique. Um, it's an 11 by 14 enlarger so it can handle Original 11 by 14. Right now I have it set up for 810. You can see the mask there. That's an 810 mask. I'm printing 8 by 10s today. So I'm, I'm using this glass carrier. This enlarger in, in its prime was $80,000. Uh, it is an incredible piece of equipment. It's a dichroic uh, enlarger. The uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow. It's a color enlarger, but I use it for black and white. And I use mostly the magenta filters, and I do split printing with the magenta. Sometimes I'll pop in some yellow, but may basically I start with a low magenta number, and then my second exposure will be a complete uh, cyan. I mean, I'm sorry, a complete magenta filtration, which is grade five. Though I don't think you can get a grade 5 on a, on a diffusion enlarger, but that's debatable. This enlarger is also really nice. As you can see, it has a movable drop table. And you control the movements here by your hand. Now, you have to understand, this, this enlarger itself probably weighs over 800 pounds. Uh, with lens, everything here, and look at that movement. That is precision. This DeVere enlarger is one of the most lovely enlargers ever made uh, for, for the kind of work that I do. Uh, behind is a Durst uh, CLS 2000. It's a 2000 watt 8 by 10 enlarger. It again has a drop table, but it is a table I have to crank. The head has to crank. It's a little bit more clumsy. It's uh, it's a it's a it's a beautiful system. This is a British-made product. This is an Italian-made product. They're both incredible. They're both very expensive in their day. This enlarger has an incredible negative stage, much nicer than the negative stages of a De, of a Devere. Uh, so I use this one in conjunction with the DeVere when I'm doing a lot of 8 by 10 work. Also, this Durst rotates horizontally. And if I had mural projects to do, I would use that. But as you can see, there's no place in this darkroom right now to do murals. I do them uh, vertically on both enlargers and all, all three systems. And I can make up the 30 by 40 enlargers. You'll also notice in this darkroom, a solarization device I have, which is up there, and I'll just turn that on, and you can see that that light is coming down from the top, 
and spreading over my tables. A lot of my work is solarization for my personal work. And so I use this um, solarization device, which has a timer here. So I would have my one developer tray, my second developer tray. And when I'm in my second and halfway through my development, I'll step back, hit the timer, and then the light flashes down. Uh, you'll see we have the second archival washer here. Uh, this, is, um, this is a 16 by 20, that's a 2024. So I have two setups for uh, water. I have one coming from one end of the building and another coming from another end so that I have good pressure here all the time.